Okay, so, guys, hey, thank you all for joining in. Uh, so good to see you all. Uh, hi, 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 Param. Gone. I lost the view of seeing everybody. So, <laughs> uh, well, good to see you all. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, it's awesome um, that you could make time on a Friday evening to, uh, you know, join our weekly youth meeting. Uh, it's been going great. We've been doing this for a year now. Just a couple of weeks over a year now. I cannot believe we've been doing this. <sighs> for so long <sighs> but, <laughs> but God's been good it's been amazing um, thank you once again for joining uh, what we'll do we'll just we'll get uh, straight into a time of worship um, and then we'll see how it goes from there okay so Father we welcome you uh, Lord we welcome you Jesus into our midst right now Father, we are gathered together in your name. Your word says where two or three are gathered, Lord, you are there in the midst of us. Jesus, come, we, we pray, come and move among us. Come and touch us like only you can do, Lord. Come and break our chains, our bondages, only like you can do, Father. Come and refresh us, Holy Spirit, with your water of life. Come and renew us, Holy Spirit. Come and do what you do best, Jesus. Come on, listen, can we just take like 30 seconds, wherever you are? And I actually want to encourage you to just close your eyes and fix your eyes on Jesus. Just take 30 seconds. And just go ahead and just say thank you to him. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, who you are. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. Oh, I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending. Reckless love of God When I was your foe Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. Oh, Jesus, you have been so, so kind to me. Sing for the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. 
chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, your love for me is so deeper, so higher, so so great, your love for me is deeper, so higher. Who shall you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me? Oh no, one you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no one you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Me. Come on, can we declare that? There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Jesus, there's no wall you won't get down, light won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending. Reckless love, God. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming. Never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, your love for me is so high. Your love for me is so deep. I just feel like, uh, can we just, just picture yourself as a sheep just lost in the wilderness under a tree, just all by yourself, just all by yourself, lost in the middle of the desert, in the wilderness. You're just prone to any kind of attack by the predator, by a snake, scorpions and what not and then and then there you see a shepherd coming after you and then he carries you on his shoulders can we just be thankful for his amazing grace tonight young people Cause he came after us, he came after you and me He made it personnel, he left the group, he left 
the groove and he made it personal. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, it leaves the ninety. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God feel like tonight it has to be a night of thanksgiving and a realization where we just uh, just realize what Jesus has done for us we don't have to think about it only on Good Friday I just say thank you thank you thank you say thank you Jesus Coming to my rescue. So, that we say thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for coming after us. pray uh, for the remainder of the night but I pray that you will continue to speak to us let your love engulf us cover us like a blanket Lord 
let us encounter your grace and your love, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. Uh, so good to see you all. Um, it's like the numbers have multiplied. We were 18 when we joined and 35. Uh, it's so good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. Uh, without any uh, delay, I want to introduce our speaker for tonight. Uh, she deserves to be introduced with a dab and all. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's is no other than uh, Manuela, Solomon, Joshua, Samuel. So it's got a big name now. So, <laughs> but, Samuel. Let's do it. <laughs> Manny, over to you. Mike is yours. Flo is yours. Thank you. All yours. Uh, I just want to thank you, Roshan, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I don't take it lightly. Uh, is my uh, audio fine? Yeah? Awesome. Um, so, Today was really strange. Like I had a hundred things to really share and like I didn't even know what topic to really pick. But the Lord has personally been taking me on a journey and I just would like to share that with you uh, today. So we're both on this journey. We're both learning and I just hope that um, it blesses you as well. So I am just going to share my screen. It's just a bunch of notes. But uh, what I really want to talk about today is comparison. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah? Okay. Um, so comparison, it's it's super strange. Like you, you look at the word and you are like, what's the point? There's nothing wrong with comparison. Like it's just comparing two things, comparing two similarities, comparing two differences. It's just two things that are just side by side being watched. And you know, one's better than the other, one's less than the other. It's a really simple thing. It happens day to day in our life. And I was like, God, but there's nothing wrong with comparison. And then I just felt the Lord challenge me so, so much as to how it's the root of a lot of things. We have a heavenly father and you know, he, he disciplines us, he loves us, and he always wants us to grow. Very often we look at like jealousy and we look at envy and we look at all these big things and say, hey, that's wrong, hey, that's wrong, hey, that's wrong. But actually it all stems from one little thought of comparison. Sometimes we can just look at somebody else and say, hey, see what they have. And that just triggers down jealousy, triggers envy. And then the rest of it is history. So, you know, the Lord was challenging me saying, hey, nip it in the bud, nip it in the root. Don't wait for it to grow where you have to fight it and things get really hard, you know, just nip it in the bud. So if you guys are okay, can you turn on your videos? So I feel like I'm not talking to myself and my screen and I want to see some familiar faces. That would really help me. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So um, I just thought we'll share a couple of passages from the word. And um, the first thing that I actually want to talk about is the parable of the prodigal son. And it's like everybody knows the par parable of the prodigal son. It's the most spoken about parable, especially when we get saved. Everybody's like, oh, I am that poor prodigal son. The father came and rescued me. And, you know, very often this parable is actually about the son. But the Lord really challenged me and said, hey, it's about the father. You're missing out. It's actually about the father. And even when Roshan spoke today, it's that same reminder. It's about an extravagant, loving father who, who just always has his arms wide open. You know, and the story goes like, I'll paraphrase it. This, this um, younger son says, okay, I'm done with you, dad. Give me my share of the property. I, I want to, you know, take that money and enjoy my life however I want. And so he goes to a foreign land. He spends it on everything, everything wrong, prostitution and whatnot. And then he realizes he's out of money. And then um, it, it becomes to such a place that he doesn't have any food to eat. And he looks at the pig's food and says, hey, you know, even that looks tempting to me right now. And then this thought crosses his mind. He says, in my father's house, even the servants have so much to eat. And so he decides to pack his bags and move back to his father's house. 
And very often, this is that point where we go, oh, the son has changed his mind, he's changed his heart, so the father receives him with open arms. But if we actually read the word, the, father, the son doesn't even come back and say, hey, can I be a servant? When the son is far away, the father looks at him and starts running towards him. He doesn't even know if the son is sorry. He doesn't even know if the son is repenting of his ways. He just sees that his son is walking towards him. And this is actually something that we as children need to realize about our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father and his love for us is independent of your deeds, independent of, of like what you have done, not done. It's independent. It's a gift. The word of God says that while we were still sinners, the Lord died for us. So the actual part of this entire par parable is the father who loves and embraces us and blesses us independent of what we deserve. And actually, if we don't understand this heart of the father, we can't actually be like him. And if we can't be like him, we begin to envy the blessing on someone else. Very soon we transition into the older brother. So the older brother is somebody who's a good boy, followed all the rules, has gone and worked every single day. And when he comes home, he suddenly sees that there's a party happening in his house. And he's like, what is this? Like, I'm not invited. I don't understand. Nobody told me anything. And he hears that the younger brother has come home. And the first thing that happens is he gets upset. Why? Because his younger brother is not deserving of a party. He actually is. He's the good guy. He's the righteous son. He deserves the party. He deserves the celebration. This guy has done everything wrong. Why would the father adorn him? He gives him a robe. He gives him a calf. Like it's so unfair. I do everything right all the time. And you've never done this for me. And very often, we're actually like that because God is unfair when it comes to our kingdom. He doesn't operate like the world operates. To him, he looks at everybody and says, he's deserving of my love. He's deserving of my love. He's deserving of my love. He's worthy of my blessing. He's worthy of my blessing. And the actual truth is that you are loved. Full stop. There's nothing you can do to make him love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. It's a gift. And so it's just this whole idea of comparison. When he, the, old, the, young, the older brother had everything. Actually, the word of God says, my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Everything belonged to the older son. He was blessed beyond measure. But just because he was looking at somebody else's blessing, he couldn't see his own. And that really challenged me because I was like, that's so true. Like I'm blessed beyond measure, but I look at somebody else and go, oh, see, they have that, I don't have that. And in a moment, we forget how blessed we are. It's not a coincidence that Roshan said Thanksgiving is so important because Thanksgiving is a way for us to see all the blessings we have in our life and go, God, I'm so blessed. Because if we choose to look at somebody else's life and envy it, we won't actually have anything to be grateful for. Because all we're seeing is what we don't have. And you know, so this parable was such a reminder. And the father says, everything I have is yours. You just need to ask me for it. But instead, at the end of the story, you know what? The father is happy. The son came back. The younger son is having the time of his life. The only person who was robbed of his blessing is the older son. The only person who was not happy, the only person that didn't have joy is the son who was looking at another instead of his own life. You know, so this was actually the parable that the Lord really challenged me with. You need to understand the father's heart. He doesn't look at things the way we do. It's, he doesn't bless you because you are worthy. He blesses you because that's who he is. And if you don't understand that that's his heart, you won't understand why somebody else is being blessed, whether they deserve it or not. 
you know so that's what the lord really challenged me with it's it's grace it's a gift don't ever think you deserve the blessing that's on your life you know the same thing the parable of the workers in the vineyard so again another parable that you know very often is spoken about and to paraphrase it again there's a man who has a vineyard and he's looking for people to work so he goes in the morning and he looks at people who don't have a job and says come work in my vineyard i will pay you a denarius at the end of the day and then the man goes back a couple of hours later see some more men and he invites them so throughout the day at different points he keeps calling these men to come to the vineyard and work and then at the end of the day when it's pay time he calls the man who worked the least in the vineyard and pays him a denarius so the guy who's worked from the morning goes wow this man is giving the guy who worked only 2 hours a denarius that means i'm going to get more and when the time came for them to get paid the were i mean the owner gave him a denarius and then immediately they were like this is unfair how can you give me a denarius you gave him also a denarius but he said you agreed to work for a denarius have i not kept my word and actually this is what the parable says am I, i'm not being unfair to you friend are you envious that i am generous and this really challenged me because the truth is the lord promises us a denarius and he gives us that denarius he gives us what he promises if he's promised something to us he does as he says but for us because somebody else is also getting that and we have been better christians very often we're like this is unfair god i deserve more and again the truth is the lord did as he promised he kept his word very often in our life he does the same thing he keeps his word he is a promise keeper but we don't see it because he's also keeping a promise to somebody else you know so i just want to encourage us you know from these parables to never take it lightly that we have a god of grace he is compassionate and kind like he has been slow to anger in your life he is slow to anger in somebody else's life and if we don't keep a check on our heart we can become self righteous we can become i am worthy they are not worthy you know and uh, i just want to read another section luke 18 11 to 14 it's that prayer of the pharisee the pharisee stands there and he goes god i thank you i'm la- i'm not like other men i you know i fast twice a week i give my tithes i'm not like that you know and you know that sinner just goes there and he prays and jesus says hey that sinner is more justified because the lord is very simple in his ways he doesn't look at it like we do it's not about whether you deserve it it's not about what you do he is extravagant in his love so if we focus on what we deserve and what somebody else doesn't deserve we can spiral down self righteousness and the bible says that our righteous acts are like filthy rags we live in grace you know so the first dangerous part of comparison is that we can become prideful and self righteous and therefore not walk in humility which the lord desires so that's like the first part the second thing is that this comparison just a continuation of this is that this comparison this thought like we said fuels jealousy and fuels envy this thought of like god you accepted them and not me why like even with cain and abel we look at that story the lord actually tells cain if you do what is right will you not be accepted or if you don't do what is right sin is crouching at your door because it starts with a thought it starts with a thought and thoughts happen to everyone there's not one of us here that doesn't have bad thoughts it's just about what we do with them are we going to let it bear fruit in our lives or are we just going to go i'm going to nip you in the bud i will not think like that so even with this story i mean i'll i'll send this presentation over i've just put in all the information so you can read it yourself but i'll just skim over it even in this story cain killed his brother out of jealousy that came from compassion even in our spiritual walk god why why do you give him the stage and not me why is 
he always leading worship and not me? Hey, why is he always doing this and not me? And straight up, that thought can lead to jealousy. And he didn't go back to God. He was actually just trying to get rid of his competition. If I get rid of my competition, then I don't have anything to be jealous about. So that um, is, is another section. I want to talk about this as well. Sorry, guys. Lots of Bible sections. Um, but this is the second one that I actually want to talk about. Um, it's Paul and David. I mean, Saul and David, sorry. And um, when David came back from battle, all the people were like, oh my God, Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed tens of thousands. And they're celebrating both people. But Saul had a problem that David was being celebrated more than him. He didn't even realize they're cheering him. It's not like they didn't mention Saul's name. It's not like they didn't talk about all the great things Saul did. But Saul could only see that David was being applauded more than him. And the Bible says that when this thought crossed his mind, Saul killed thousands and David killed tens of thousands, this song made Saul angry. And it said from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on him. And you know the rest of the story. That one thought of like, hey, they're, they're praising David more than me. That one thought, the rest of the story, David is just fleeing from Saul because Saul couldn't get that thought out of his mind. It fueled and he fueled and he thought about it as he slept and he thought about it every single day of his life. And the next thing you know, he couldn't stand David anymore. Very often comparison leads to jealousy and like in Joseph's case and Cain and Abel's case and in Saul and David's case, it wants to make you go to the extent of even killing somebody. You begin to detest the person when you begin to brood over that thought. In contrast, another verse, when we look at John the Baptist from John 3, 29 and 30, John the Baptist and his disciples, they come up to him and said, hey, have you seen Jesus? Jesus is growing really popular. He's doing the same things that you're doing. He's baptizing people in the, in the Jordan River. Like you have to go and stop him. Like he's doing what you are doing. And you know what John the Baptist says? He must become greater and I must become less. How is it that this man could nip the thought in, his, in the bud? How is it that he did it differently? And it's this very thought that he knew he was sent onto this earth to preach about the Messiah. He was so focused on the purpose that the Lord had given to him. He didn't have time to think about other people's lives, other people's comments. He's like, hey, I have, I have to obey God. I have to obey God. I have to obey what he has told me. And he guarded his heart from comparison. And so this, like the Bible gives us these contrasts for us to know what the difference is. If we lose plot of what the Lord is telling us, that's it. We won't be able to walk and guard our hearts. But if we keep our hearts guarded, and hey, this is what the Lord desires of me. This is what he's calling me. If your gift is preaching, why do you waste your time looking at worship leaders and going, see them, yeah, see them, yeah, see them, yeah. Like it makes no sense. Like your gift, if, the, if your gift is preaching, if your gift is to encourage people, why do you waste your time going see what they have and I don't have? Like he has placed things within you to walk your own life. Like God is a jealous God. He basically intends you and him like this intimate little circle. He has something special for Pastor Roshan. He has something special for John Paul. He has something special for Sam and all three look alike. He doesn't want Roshan one, Roshan two, Roshan three. John Paul one, John Paul two, John Paul Jr. Like it makes no sense. He doesn't want replicas. He has something special for each of us. And in accordance with that, he plants gifts. And we waste our time trying to run some other person's race, some other person's gifts. If I had that, I could have done this. But that's not what the Lord wants of you. He has already equipped you for what he wants of you. So comparison actually distracts us from running a focused race. He has given you unique gifts. You know, it talks about the body of Christ. One's the hand, one's the nose, one's the eyes. And they all look different. They all have different strengths. They all have different gifts. But unless they work together, 
the body doesn't function as a whole. And the Bible says, if one eye is saying, I want to be able to hear, like you, you don't have the senses in you to be able to do that. Yes, you can grow in your ability, but what the Lord wants of you is for you to be able to see that he's placed all those receptors in your life to be the eye. You know, so he is so intentional. When God says he meets you in your mother's womb, he's thinking from day one to the day you die. He already knows how he's going to use you. He already knows the race that he has for you. And he always equips you already for that with all the gifts, with all the personality, all the traits. If he's going to use your mouth to preach, he's going to give you the gift of the gab. He's going to give you, give you the gift of the word. He's going to give you the gifts that are required for your calling. You know, so I just want to like intentionally say there are so many verses that God has made us unique. Embrace yourself. Embrace your race. Embrace your gifts. You have been chosen for this race, not for John Paul's race and not for Sam's race. You've been chosen. I've been chosen for Manuela's race. And I have to learn to cultivate the gifts that he's planted in me. I don't actually have time to look at somebody else and be like, oh, I don't have what he has. I don't, I have to be faithful. So if we don't keep our mind focused on what the Lord has given us, we will be complacent. We will not grow. We will just be focusing on other things instead of what is cultivated within us. It's our job to be our best versions of ourselves. You know, so that's something that comparison does. So in summary, comparison actually inhibits you from understanding the father and his goodness. And if you don't understand the father, how can you be his child? How can the child replicate the father and his heart if you don't understand it? We're saying we want to be like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. But what is his heart like? And comparison will cause you to not understand that. Comparison will hinder you from walking in humility because it will give you entitlement. It will give you like, I deserve it. It will hinder you from recognizing the purpose that the Lord has placed in you. It will hinder you from recognizing his blessing. You won't be able to be grateful because all your mind is focusing on is what somebody else has, not on what you have. You, you're always thinking about what you don't have when your eyes are fixed on somebody else instead of what you actually have. So it hinders you from recognizing his blessing and from being content. Just one last thing. This is probably one of these strange quotes, but actually it spoke a lot to me. It says, never compare your backstage to somebody's on stage. It's not what it seems. In this time and age, we are living like a social media time and age where everything, oh, wow, look at that outfit oh wow look at her she's so good looking she's so talented he's so rich like oh look at their marriage they have everything look at that family they're always traveling social media just gives us this reality and this idea of how their lives are perfect they're only showing you what they want to show you they're only showing you the good days who's going to who's going to take a video of you and your husband fighting at home nobody Who's going to take a video of you disobeying your parents? They're only posting the happy mom and dad and daughter picture. Like what I'm trying to say is social media cultivates this life where we're cropping, we're adding filters, we're beautifying everything to give us this perfect reality. And we who are actually living day to day like this, facing everything, walking with the Lord, are looking at somebody's like perfection and going, they have it perfect. I don't. They have everything I don't. And so it's really important, especially during lockdown and everything, we've all got so much more active on social media, so much more active in this virtual reality. We need to understand that we don't actually know their lives. We don't know what they're going through. We see one moment of their day. And we think that moment is, is their life and we don't have anything. Look at us, I only know. Like you know yourself best, you are facing your backstage. Do not compare what you see to be reality. 
So I just want to like challenge us with that. We only see like their glory. We don't actually know like the story or anything that's behind that, you know? So just like, I want us to like be the sort of people that will be like, I am not going to succumb to this. I am not going to succumb to looking at somebody's life and wanting it. The Bible says, do not covet. It was one of the commandments that the Lord gave his people because he knew we were like that. We knew, he knew we were naturally the kind that would be like, wow, look at them. He knew that about us. So he actually gave it to us as a commandment saying, don't covet what your neighbor has. Don't covet what you see. Because that's the norm. The norm is to covet. And we as his children need to be able to say, I will not do that. I will not do that. I will say yes to what the Lord is telling me. I will keep my heart so guarded that it's only between God and I. I will not let another person in their life come into this little like sacred circle. This is just like, God, what do you want of me? God, what do you want of me? Hey, did you see that fellow? Hey, wow, very nice. But this is not what the Lord wants of me. Like, protect your relation to, relationship to just God in you. Protect it. Don't allow somebody else to come in and disrupt it. Like the older brother, the first thing that will happen is you will lose. Nobody else loses. Everybody else wins. You're the only one who loses because you disrupted what was meant to be only between God and you. So I just want to like end with just this little thing. Like you'll always lose if it's comparison. So let's not waste our time comparing ourselves to like people. Like I'm all for looking at somebody and wanting to grow. If you're growing what the Lord has placed within you, that is good. But if you're coveting, if you are feeling insecure at the end of looking at somebody, if you are feeling that you lack something at the end of it, that is unhealthy. That's not from the Lord. That is discontent. That's not what God desires of us. If you are growing, if you are learning from somebody, that's healthy. So, you know, if we're going to compare ourselves to anyone, let's only compare ourselves to the standard that Jesus has set for us. Everything else is a waste of time. That's not your race. That's not your focus. Let's just fix our eyes on Jesus and work towards growing in his likeness. So practically, just one last slide. How do we actually overcome comparison? Like practically, what can I do as a believer? Know this one truth that God is sovereign. He makes no mistakes. He is perfect and intentional. He has knit you in your mother's womb, meaning you are created for a specific, specific purpose, different from everybody else. And he has placed everything within you. If he is good and his will is perfect, then you have been created perfectly and uniquely. So know this. So every time you have a voice that whispers in your ear, saying, hey, you, you lack this gift, man. Hey, you lack this. Oh, you're not pretty, man. Oh, you're not this. That voice, shut it down. Saying, I am perfectly made. God makes no mistakes. Second thing that you can do practically is jealousy and envy that come out of comparison. Let's do the opposite of that. When we see a blessing in somebody's life, let's celebrate it. Let's actually celebrate the good that the Lord is doing in somebody else's life. You're automatically defeating envy and jealousy. How? By doing the opposite. If I can say, if somebody goes, oh, did you see that fellow man? He's always getting the stage. That's amazing, man. And I hope that God multiplies it and uses him for his glory. Like if you can cultivate that habit of like blessing people, blessing people, encouraging what the Lord is doing in their life, we are automatically defeating comparison. We are automatically defeating envy, greed, and self-righteousness because we're celebrating what the Lord is doing in someone else. When we see that, we're like, oh, that's like my Jesus. My Jesus is compassionate and kind. He has so much grace for every single person on this planet. It will change everything about how we live life. So celebrating will automatically get rid of comparison. And the last thing, and the most cliche thing, but the most powerful thing is actually declare the word over your life. 
like I want I want to be so honest at this point like like growing up I struggled so much with like all sort of insecurities like growing up I remember I used to be so like oh you're so dark oh you're not good looking oh you're this oh you're that oh look at this person they sing so much better even when I joined the worship team like it took me so long to even sing one word because I'll just be like oh they sing better it's better they sing you know that it took me so long to even pray in a public setting because the moment somebody else was there I'll be like a pastor ocean obviously like he prays better than me just ask him so you know what I'm trying to say is that I really like if we have comparison like that you're not going to grow you're not going to grow it took me so long to pray it took me so long to like sing publicly because I was always like there's someone better there's someone better there's someone better and I had to as funny as it sounds stand in the mirror for many days in a row and go you are fearfully and wonderfully made there is no flaw in you and i began to just declare the word over and over again today as well like even when pastor roshan asked me to share my instant reaction was no i'm not going to do it and then i had to sit down with the lord and go god like there's no point so then i started declaring over my life i am a vessel he is going to use me he is going to do these things through me I like gave in practically today there like a couple of my friends were making fun of me I started this page about plants and you know the first thing that happened is I went oh they know so much more I am unworthy to even start I am just a beginner like I had all these thoughts about how I was unworthy because I'm comparing myself to somebody else but the lord is like hey what if what if I want to use you like what if I want to use you like I want you as a vessel I am okay you know to use you however you want i just need your yes and very often we're not giving our yes because we are like hey but they are better hey but they are better you know so i just want to encourage you declare over your life what the lord has done he's not called you for small things each of you here knows him intimately and he has placed so much within you and it doesn't have to look like anybody else in this group but you personally are you doing what the lord wants to do through you what are you wasting your time just going hey i don't look like this you know so just i want to ask you to declare what the lord has personally spoken to you this is not a corporate declaration this is your personal declaration you know so i just declare that you keep reminding yourself and then you will see that it changes everything so i just want to encourage us with that thank you guys <laughs> thanks many you want to pray and uh Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this evening, God. Father, I thank you that you are a good and kind Father, and I ask that each of us here will grow in your likeness, God. I thank you that you are so good that you have great plans, not just for some of us, but for all of us, God. You have great plans for each of us, plans to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future, and plans for each of us to be used in your kingdom. there is not one of us that you would not like to use god so just ask that you would breathe this reality into our lives god father i ask that we will walk so intimately with you just you and your daughter your son god just you and i and that nothing will be able to come and hinder that place jesus nothing will be able to come in the way of you and i I just bless each person here in the name of Jesus and ask that they will grow in the confidence that the Lord has the plans that he has for each of us and that we will grow and say no to comparison say no to any voices of the enemy who comes to steal kill and destroy everything that you want to do in our lives God we just surrender our hearts to you surrender our minds to you God and i ask that you will strengthen us to say no to these voices release your word into our hearts father that we will just be able to say no we surrender ourselves to you in jesus mighty name we pray amen thanks many um i think it's i mean even this is for just a couple more minutes i just feel like um uh as from the beginning you know many this is just an awesome word um I, this theme of uh, just 
seeing how good God is and how personal that he wants to be, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm just reminded of that. And, uh, and that's why I think uh, I saw this image of a sheep under the tree uh, in the dark in the wilderness. And, um, but what I also saw after that is that him carrying the sheep on his shoulders. And I feel like that is uh, for, if not for all of us, for some um, for somebody, someone, um, it's going to be that season of intimacy. It's, uh, I was just reminded it's when the shepherd carries the sheep over his shoulder. It's that journey, in that journey they become close. Uh, and I feel like some of you are going to go on the journey with God where he's going to carry you on his shoulders uh, and, and then his voice is going to become so familiar over your lives. Um, I just feel that and I release that over your lives. And also at this time, um, I want to also invite some of the core team members. Hey, if the Lord is speaking, putting something in your heart, um, I want you to just release it over people. Like if it's a prophetic word, um, um, uh, a, a word of knowledge, whatever it is. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to take a couple more minutes. Just hang in there. Okay, I know it's Friday night. Um, yeah, whoever it is, just go for it and release that word. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Just in line with what uh, Manny was speaking, there's some of us who feels like we are not good enough. We have not reached that place. And um, I'm sure that you've heard enough um, through the word. Just want to remind um, some of us who feels like, you know, and who have already, I feel like someone who, who has already looked at the mirror and said, no, you're not worth it. And this is for that person that God wants to say this. And um, this is from Colossians chapter one. We read God has qualified us to be partakers of his kingdom. So he has called you qualified. And this is one word which we, we can hold on, which, which we can uh, you know, hang on, that God says that we are qualified, you are qualified. I just want to release this word over your life, every inferiority complex. I command it to leave right now from the minds of the people. Amen. We pray, Lord Jesus, that uh, our minds and our thoughts will be consecrated to entertain what you speak about us, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We declare that over, our, uh, over all of us who are in the call right now. And every word that has been spoken in the past, we cancel its effect in the name of Jesus and we call forth blessing from the Lord. And we call forth favor. I just feel like someone um, uh, who is looking for a favor in your, in your workplace, um, uh, there is a supernatural favor from the Lord that God wants to release over your life. May you find favor in the eyes of your boss, in the eyes of your manager, and we declare that to have happen in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Anybody else from the team? Um... Uh, it's really funny. I know I've spoken a lot. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I really feel like I need to do this. This is, I, I feel very strongly that this is for the women in the group. Um, and I wouldn't usually do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I feel that a lot of us really struggle to look at ourselves and just see the masterpiece that the Lord has done. Mm. And, you know, I, I want to declare this over us. Firstly, when it comes to, to the exterior, of, like, like looking at yourself in the mirror, that's the first thing that I got. But the second thing I really felt, um, being an Indian woman, that you were asked to keep quiet. I got this word over and over again, that you have been asked to keep quiet because you need to look a certain way to fit into our culture. And you felt like the Lord will not use you. He will use the men. But I just wanna release this word over us saying, God sees no difference between a man and a woman. He just sees a surrendered vessel. And if you are able to say yes, he can do immensely greater than you can ask or imagine through you. Amen. So I just ask right now that you will shut every voice that is asking you to conform to society and just ask that you will open your heart to what the Lord wants to do. So I just want to pray that over women here 
Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are an empowering God. I thank you, Lord, that all you need is not perfection, but surrender, God. I just see this over and over again. You are not required to be perfect, just surrender. So Lord, I just speak against all the women here that have been asked to keep quiet, asked to conform to a certain image, Lord. I just ask that you will break off the chains in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that you will set free everybody that is bound to conform. And I say, Lord, that you will set a new normal, the normal of being a daughter of the most high God in whom there are no limits. If we will but say yes, so just I ask for your confidence, your revelation, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, I ask that every time we look at ourselves in the mirror, that you will speak your life, your perspective into us and not the world's perspective, God. I just ask that only your perspective will have supremacy in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, Manny. Sharon, uh, did you have a word? I saw you raising your hands. Okay, I don't see Sharon. Um, Sorry. I'm just going to share something with you. Sure. So, uh, I had this picture of, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of people lined up and uh, people getting doors as in opportunities, as in different houses. And uh, I saw this picture of, you know, that there were so many friends or, you know, or colleagues or whatever you want to call it, that who were all lining up towards this golden door, you know, that was opening up, was very majestic and very royal. But uh, on the other hand, I saw people who were like, you know, like really working hard to go towards these small wooden doors, but actually those wooden doors, as they went in, you know, opened up to treasures. So I really feel like that was like very in line with also what Manny shared that, you know, as we're like just faithful in those little things, it doesn't seem much, seems like a small wooden door at this moment, you know, it doesn't seem like that majestic golden door. But I really feel like, you know, God's just calling us to just keep our eyes set on what he wants us to do and just go with it. And there are hidden treasures that we are unaware of that heaven has in store that we just don't have perspective that he is showing us right now. And I think the moment we set our perspective on him that, you know, so I really feel like in our lives, at whatever situation we are in our jobs, our education, our school, wherever, whatever we are doing right now, that, you know, that there is treasure ahead and it's very special and specific to you. So I just want to share that. Awesome. Amen. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for sharing. Okay, um, that's it. Um, okay, all right, uh, we'll uh, bring it to an end. Uh, hey guys, uh, just awesome, awesome to uh, uh, see you all. Uh, thanks for joining in. I see a lot of new people. Um, that is awesome. Uh, thank you for taking a Friday night off and joining us. Um, and I think uh, there was so much of, uh, you know, the theme of intimacy also in, in what we were discussing and uh, it's kind of leading for what's ahead for the next two weeks having pastor jakes uh, who will be sharing on the deeper depths of intimacy uh i'm, I'm excited for that uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be awesome so uh I just remember we do this for you uh you know it's, uh yeah there's nothing extra bonus or anything that we, any of us get <laughs> but you know we we want to equip and empower you guys um so that's our heart uh, you know so join in okay the next weekend and uh, next friday and the friday after invite your friends whoever wants to join in uh, all of you all are welcome to join in um yeah sam has uh, posted a, an email id if you've been blessed share with us testimony at abcwo.org or also at youth at abcwo.org uh, oops sorry i sent it to social <sighs> social is my best friend so <laughs> you can also email it to youth at abc oh yeah that one okay all right uh take care guys uh good night see you all next week bye bye